Well, good morning. What a beautiful morning. It's lovely, isn't it? Great to, uh, great to welcome you here. A very warm welcome to you. It's also great to have you joining us online. So welcome to those that are joining with us uh, on YouTube. And uh, let's have some words uh, from the book of Revelation as we come to worship. Jesus went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he'd taken it, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals, because you were slain. And with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You've made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. Then I looked... And heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands, and ten thousand times ten thousand. That's quite a lot, isn't it? They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice, they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth, and under the earth, and on the sea, and all that is in them, saying, to him who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb, be praise, and honor, and glory, and power, forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen, and the elders fell down and worshipped. What an amazing vision that is. Let's pray as we come to worship. Lord, we come because of the Lamb that was slain. We come because his blood has purchased us. People from every tribe and language and people and nation. Lord, you've made us into your people, your part of your kingdom. And Lord, we come this morning to worship you, to fall down before you. Lord, you're here where two or three gather in the name of Jesus. There you are in the midst. Lord, move among us. Lift our eyes. Lord, may we see something more of you as we spend this time together, that you would be glorified and praised, honored and worshipped by your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's stand together. In the eyes of my heart. 
Amen. Amen. Please take your seats. Well, good morning, everybody, and good morning to you, you watching online at home. Hope you're well this morning. Good morning, Mark. Good you morning, okay? Andy. Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah, great. Um, so, uh, I've brought my pictures. Oh, yeah, yeah. Photos. I've got, got my one here. Yeah, I've probably got a few more than you. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And you know what? This is getting old. Is it getting old? Yeah, this is for my 18th, you can see. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, a few uh, moths came out then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, can I have a look at those um, baby photos? Uh, well, only if I'm going to see yours. What? What, we have to swap? What, yeah, at the same time? Do. Yeah, Okay, you ready? Right, go. Okay, okay. Oh, this will be interesting. Hang on! You haven't got any baby photos in this one. Oh, no, I've, I've hidden those. You... <sighs> oh, your baby photos are in colour. That's a surprise. Well, actually, there, there is a black and white one here. There yeah. is, there is. I'm not making it up. Actually, it's probably only the one, because my dad was into slides at that point. Ah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, that's why you've got a lot. Ah, oh, wow. Oh, look at you. Oh, beautiful photos. Ooh. Oh, wow. Come on, don't you look like your dad? Yeah, he gets more like me every day, doesn't he? God. Yeah, Goodness yeah. Goodness me. I say that because, you know, I'm having those moments now where you go, oh, I am like my dad. Oh, OK. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. Right. Oh, they let you out wearing that. <laughs> what? Well, you know, it's not too bad. Well, I didn't really choose that one. Oh, OK, you're a bit young. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, why have we got these photos then? Oh, um, well, actually, that's for later. Later? Yeah, 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 a bit later. Oh. We'll come back to that. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking, actually, could you do a recap for us of where we're up to? Recap. Uh, I think... Uh, with that, with that, with that. Um, well, we're... Um, where, where are we? We've got to... Oh, yeah, we've reached verse 13. OK. Out oh. of chapter 1. Oh. So it means we've done verses 1 to 12, Andy. That's... There we are. Is that, is that it? Yeah. A little bit more information? Oh, well, I can't remember that. <laughs> oh, God, dear. Oh, I wonder if there's another way that you might be able to remember. Ooh. What? Hey, uh, what about if I were Peter? Okay. Talking. So if you become Peter? Peter now, yep. Okay. So you're Peter now? Yes, Yeah, sir. yeah okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So you've turned into Peter? Yes. So Peter says, so far I have written to the Christians for whom life was hard and tough. Okay, and what did Peter want them to know? Well, he wanted to encourage them to keep going. That they were going, what they were going through now would only be for a little while. Ah, yeah, a little while compared to eternity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah remember that. Yes, and through faith in Jesus... And his death and resurrection, we have been brought and born again into God's family. And our sins are forgiven. Yeah, that's really good news. Such good news. Yeah. I feel like singing. Oh. You know, I've been thinking about that phrase, living hope. And I've put a little song together. Would you like to hear it? Um... Um, it starts like this. Uh, oh, actually, Mark, there's a song that's um, about living hope. Oh, is there? Yeah, I think well, we could there. sing that one instead. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, maybe next time then. I'll get practising, yeah? Okay, okay. <laughs> Might need quite a bit of practising. <laughs> right, moving on. Let's stand together and let's think about the living hope that we have in Jesus.
and please take your seats. Wow. Such joy we have because of Jesus. Jesus, our living hope. And that joy that is ahead will reach heaven even greater. And this is a joy that no one can take away from us. Oh, this really is priceless. What treasure we have because of Jesus. Why, well, I've written a lot. You have been busy. Yes, but it's time for the therefore. The what? The therefore. The therefore? Yes. Whenever you get the word wherefore in the Bible, you have to ask, what is the therefore? Oh, okay. Let me explain. I'm writing the next bit. And because of all that Jesus has done, bringing us into his family, giving us a priceless inheritance and all that, I want the new Christians to see that they need to live differently. Differently to the world, to those around them? Exactly. See, God has brought them with the precious blood of Jesus, Hmm. that Jesus died for our sin. So we aren't just to go around sinning now, but we are to be holy. Like God is holy. Like how we started with the songs at the beginning, singing about God is holy. Yeah, you'd think all that was planned, wouldn't you? Yes, just like those songs. Wow, yeah, how amazing, how perfect God is, how beautiful, and yet how he brings us into his family to be like him. Yeah, I see why we started with the family albums now. Ah, yeah. So just like we looked at our families, a bit like my dad and a bit like my mum, so when we are born again into God's family, God wants us to become more and more like him. Yeah, exactly. So the Holy Spirit helps make us holy. Yeah, that's right. Because we'll never be like... God fully, will we? But when we become part of his family, he gives us his Holy Spirit to help us, to make us holy. And God's word helps us to get to know God better. Yeah. Well, that's good stuff. I remember when I was little, when I did something that my parents really loved, they, it would please them and make them happy. It's a bit like God. Oh, yeah, I guess it is. What, we live to put a big smile on God's face. I like that. In thanks for all that Jesus has done. Yeah, I think that sounds pretty good. Well, I guess it's time to end for today. But you know something? God wants everyone to be part of his family too. Hmm. Anyway, let's pray. Lord, thank you for bringing us into your family. Thank you that Jesus died for my sin, for his precious sacrifice for me. Thank you that you give us your Holy Spirit to help us. Lord, I live to bring your glory, to please you, and live to put a smile on your face. Help me to share your love with those around me, that they may know you as a loving father, who loves them so much that he sent Jesus to die for them. Father, you want us to know that you are holding us tight and that one day we are going to be with you forever in heaven. Lord, help us to share the amazing news of what Jesus has done on the cross for us all. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Mark. So before the children and young people head to their groups, let's stand for a song as we think about the amazing grace that enables us to come to to God.
Okay, children and young people, if you'd like to head to your groups, we'll catch up with you a bit later. We'll sing one more song here. seats. Let's pray before we look into God's word together. Father, we come to you, we come to worship you, to glorify you, to praise you. 
Lord, as we come to you, we bring to you in this moment just people who are on our mind, situations, places, countries, people. Lord, we just lift them to you. Lord, particularly at this time, we pray for those who have lost a loved one this last week. Lord, we pray you'd be really close to them. They would know your comfort, your presence, your enabling. Lord, would you, would you help in that situation, we ask. Lord, too, we pray. Pray for those that are looking ahead to this coming week with the expectation of a birth of a child. And Lord, we do pray that you would be very close to them, that they would know your presence as a whole family, as a new addition looms near. Lord, too, we pray for this world in which we live, a world with this war that's ongoing in Ukraine. Lord, we do ask again for your peace in that country. Lord, would there be peace in the coming days, we ask. Somehow, we pray. We pray for all those affected, impacted, that have lost loved ones, that might be trapped, who have fled. Lord, would you be very close to them? Lord, may they know that you are their heavenly Father, that they can run to you, know your loving arms around them. Envelop them in your love, we ask. And Lord, as we look now into your word, we pray that you'd speak to us by your spirit, that you'd open your word to us, that your word would perform surgery in our hearts and lives and minds. So Lord, we commit this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so let me just move this out of the way so I don't knock it off. We carry on in 1 Peter with the next installment. Um, and the start with the word therefore, you may have guessed that. Uh, and we will see what it's there for in a moment. But let's read from 1 Peter 1. And it starts at verse 13. In the NLT we get so, but in the NIV we get therefore. So let's hear these words. Therefore prepare your minds for action and exercise self-control. Put all your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know any better then. But now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. For the scriptures say, you must be holy because I am holy. And remember that the Heavenly Father to whom you pray has no favorites. He will judge or reward you according to what you do. So you must live in reverent fear of him during your time here as temporary residents. For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver which lose their value. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God, who chose him as your ransom long before the world began. But now in these last days, he has been revealed for your sake. Without overemphasizing the point... When you find a therefore in the Bible, it's always a good idea to ask what it is there for. But let's have a story first. Keep you waiting. I remember some years ago, we uh, bought a new sat-nav. And uh, it it was great. You know, it looked great, uh, had great reviews, a much clearer screen uh, than our previous one, much more up-to-date, had traffic information, a little bit delayed. Um, sometimes it'll tell you there was a queue when there wasn't sometimes it wouldn't tell you when there was but on the whole it wasn't too bad apart from it had a habit 
of really enjoying roads that had grass growing in the middle. And that's where we ended up over and over and over again. I kid you not. One holiday, I think we saw most of them in that area. Then also, it had, um, seemed to have the desire to take you along narrow roads. I remember the once both mirrors were hitting the hedge. That's when you know the road's narrow, and you're thinking, if it gets any narrower, I'm really not going to get through this. Um, the worst time, I think, was when we were away with about 40 or 50 uh, other people in a church uh, a week away, and uh, the sat-nav decided that we could go a quicker route back to this big house where we were all staying, and we thought, well, we might as well follow this new sat-nav that we've got, you know, didn't realize it was quite so bad at this point. So we followed it through Gated Road over Cattle Grid, and for the Lake District, it was remarkably quiet. And, and it kept saying, go straight ahead, you know, as they do, go straight ahead. And we got straight ahead, and then straight ahead, it was saying, go straight ahead, was a shingle bank about that steep. And I'm not even sure you could walk up it. It was that bad. You just slid back down. There was that much shingle and, and slate and whatever there. But that was what it was saying, go straight ahead. And actually, that was the hill that the house was on the other side to. So it kind of got us close. But yeah, so we ended up turning around, going back all the way around, and ended up 10, 15 minutes later than everyone else that was there. And they were all going, where have you been? And following the new sat-nav and everything else, you know what it's like. But you know, the Christian life, we discover, don't we, that there actually are no shortcuts to holiness. Um, there are no green grass roads that lead us quick there quicker. And if we think we've got a better way than God himself has given us, we find out that it's like a slippery shingle bank and we slide back down it and it takes us longer. A few weeks ago, we had the phrase we thought about that obedience is a long walk in the same direction. And we'll, come on, we'll kind of pick up a bit on that as well in this passage today. Peter has said, hasn't he, that we're chosen, that we're cleansed, that we're changed by Jesus. That through faith in his death and resurrection, we become part of his family. That we've received God's mercy. We've been born again, and it's all because of Jesus, all that Jesus has done. It's all a work of God, and that's a clue in what comes next as well. Because of God's mercy, because of his grace, we've received this priceless treasure this inheritance that when we die is ours, it's secure for us in heaven. And as we thought last week, you know, we can have deep joy in this life because we're his, we're secure in his hands, we're eternally protected, safe, secure. And all the things we go through in life, if we look to God through those, God can use those, even the painful times, to refine us to sculpt us, to change us. We had that picture of the silversmith taking, refining the silver in the furnace. And the person asked, you know, how do you know when it's done? And the silversmith said, when I can see my reflection in the silver, that becoming more like God, that's what he wants to do in us. And last week's passage ended with the verse that, you know, the angels are eagerly watching all these things happen. It's an interesting verse, isn't it? There was one uh, commentator who said this, and I thought it was quite interesting. He said, the angels looked on because heaven had lost its center of attention, center of attraction, when Jesus came to earth. That's quite a powerful image, isn't it? So in a way, this is, and that in a way is where this passage takes us. God sent his one and only son to die for us, to shed his blood for us, his most precious son. He gave him up for us. And this passage says, you know, that God wants us to live our lives for him, to not live like the world around us, not to conform to the ways and the patterns of this world, but be transformed to be more like our king, more like our God. We'll come on to that in a moment. But the emphasis here in this passage is that Jesus has paid our ransom. 
He's paid the price. Every sin of yours and mine was laid upon him. And God doesn't want us to keep adding to that pile of sins that Jesus had to die for by continuing to live in sin. He wants us to live lives that are holy, that are pleasing to our God, our Father, because he is holy. He wants us to be holy. It's all challenging stuff, isn't it? Because we know that we mess up so much and we live in a world that's messed up in a world that's all about what you can get for yourself it's the opposite way round to what's here isn't it the world's about living for yourself so much this is about living for god jc ryle bishop jc ryle said this holiness is the habit of being of one mind with god and we find his mind described in Scripture. It's the habit of agreeing with God's judgment, hating what he hates, loving what he loves, and measuring everything in this world by the standard of his word. Peter wants us to see that not only have we been born again into God's family, not only are we now living in God's kingdom, but we're to be different because we are doing so. That we're strangers and exiles in this world. But now we are children, God's children, born again into his family. And as we've thought with the photo albums, we are to reflect his image. That as we walk with him, his spirit works in so that our nose becomes a bit more like his that our eyes see the world more like he sees the world. That our hands and feet serve more like he wants to serve. And so you could say that the therefore in this passage is there because it's moving us from theology to ethics. It's taking us from what we believe to the way we live our life. And that continues a lot through the rest of 1 Peter. It takes us from what we've received in Christ, in Jesus, to the implications of that for our everyday lives. And the challenge is not to follow our own satnav and get lost all over the place, but to follow his paths, his ways, his roads. And this means ultimately living day by day in partnership with God. Living with him, opening his holy word, his holy scriptures day by day with his Holy Spirit helping us. And that as we submit to word and spirit, then we'll see more of the holiness of God in us. That's the fruit of God's spirit. More love, more joy, more peace and patience and all of that more of the fruit of holiness in us. And so the challenge here is that we have received the most overwhelming treasure. We've been welcomed into the family of the world's, the universe's most generous, greatest giver. We've become part of God's family. We have this heavenly Father who gave his most treasured possession for us. And so we are to live our lives to worship him, to enjoy his goodness, to find our purpose, our reason for life, our joy, our delight in him, and not to be conformed to the things of the world around us. So this is about making wise decisions in the workplace. It's about saying no to things that compromise our faith. It's about finding in God everything that we need. I love that version, the New Living Translation, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. It's about finding in God our delight. Finding in him our delight, not in the temporary things of the world around us. Okay, I've got a question, but I've got a bit of a tickly throat this morning, so I'll just have a little drink. 
That wasn't the question. Um, the question is, and now this is going to sound a little bit strange, okay? Oh, you're all looking attentive, interesting. The question is, how many of you have tried running in a long skirt? How many of you have tried running in a long robe? Not that many. You're really confused now, aren't you? Well, this passage starts with words about girding up your loins, is the old-fashioned phrase, which probably makes no sense to most of us. But it's actually a picture of a Roman soldier who's getting ready for war. There he is with his long robe, long dress, whatever you want to call it, and he's going to be hampered by it if he tries to do anything on the battlefield. Uh, it's going to get in the way. He's going to hinder him. He might fall over it at the crucial moment and all of that. So he picks, gathers the long road, wraps it under his, uh, and through his legs, round his waist, and ties it with a belt. And so it's kind of sorted, and then he's ready, ready for action, ready for whatever might come. And that is that first verse that we had, verse 13. It says, prepare your minds for action. And that's the image that's there. So it's basically saying, pull up the skirt of your brain. I thought I might get a laugh, but no. Well, I didn't know I had a skirt on my brain, but, but there you go. You know, what it's basically saying seriously is make sure that anything that could hinder you is out of the way. Prepare your minds for action. And the next bit is similar in the sense that the robe or the skirt could make us fall over. So it says, then exercise self-control. And the image that is behind these words is of a drunken person staggering around who's not in control of their mind or their actions, who's kind of wandering, wandering around aimlessly. And Peter is saying, you know, I want you to have minds that are alert, that you are in control of. Because... I want you to set your mind on that hope, that amazing hope because of the amazing grace of God and all the goodness and all the benefit that we have, that this treasure is not of this world, but the treasure is God himself. And I was thinking about this image, and I wondered whether this reminded Peter of Pentecost, you know, as they were accused of being drunk, and Peter makes it clear, no, no, no. This is nothing to do with that at all. The reason that they're all speaking in other languages is because this is a work of God's Spirit. And here Peter is saying, don't get drunk. Don't lose control. Be sober in spirit. Be self-controlled. And focus day by day on what God has done and is doing and is going to do. That living hope that we have in Jesus so if you imagine a drunken person, you imagine a Roman soldier in a skirt, both losing their balance. This is Peter wanting us to look at our own lives, to see where we might be out of balance. Where do we need to take action? What are our priorities? What's our discipline towards God look like? Is our balance right in our lives? Gird up your loins. Are you sober-minded? Because this is what leads us towards holiness. We have our focus on the hope that we have in Christ. We're not to live as we did before we knew Jesus. But we're to live as God's obedient children. And it's saying, you know, before we became a Christian, we were disobedient children towards God. We were following the ways of the world. We were not living to please God, but doing our own thing. But as now, but now as those in Christ, as those in whom God lives by his spirit, we are to pursue holiness. We're to be shaped by Jesus, refined, conformed more and more into his likeness. It's a slow process, we know. But over time, that's what he wants. And we know that we'll never be sinless. But in response to God's mercy is our desire 
to become more and more holy as God is holy. Romans 12, 1 to 2 says similar things. It says, So dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. So how do we do this? Well, in the last part, in verses 17 to 20, Peter makes what seems on the face of it to be a bit confusing because he says you must live in reverent fear of him during your time here as temporary residents. For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver which lose their value. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. God chose him as your ransom long before the world began. But now in these last days has been revealed for your sake. So if you shorten that down, it's virtually like it's saying we're to live in reverent fear because Jesus died for us and ransomed us. It doesn't sound quite right, does it, in some ways? Or does it? Because actually, there's something really helpful here. In the Lord's Prayer, we start with the words, Our Father. Which is a beautiful phrase, isn't it? That we can call Jesus' Father, Our Father that we've got direct access to him through the cross, that we come to our Father in heaven. We bring our prayers, our requests, whatever time, wherever we are, we have that direct access. But alongside our Father, we have the words, hallowed be your name. Words that speak of God's otherness. Words that speak that, you know, he's not like an earthly father, that he's holy, all holy, he's almighty, He's all-powerful. And before him, we're to live with reverent fear. This isn't a being scared of fear, but it's a fear that leads us to awe and wonder and praise, that leads us to our knees in worship. So we're to live our lives in reverent fear of our Father in heaven. And that's saying, yes, yes, he is Abba Father, but he's also holy. He's also powerful. We need to have that balance in this. And then he speaks about the ransom that Jesus has paid for us, that he paid the price so that we could be set free, and that this payment wasn't with silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, that we've been bought at the greatest cost the blood of Jesus. So we've been brought into God's family. And as part of his family, we're to live in his tender loving care, lives that are pleasing to him because we find in him everything we need. So to live holy lives towards holiness, we need to find our delight in God. That chief aim of glorifying God and enjoying him forever. And as we find our delight in God, then we will live more and more holy lives. Key in all of this is the work of God's Holy Spirit in us. We can't become holy without him at work in us. He wants us to be obedient children, Children that take that long walk in the same direction with him so that he can refine us, he can purify us so that as we partner with him, as we immerse ourselves into him, as we immerse ourselves into God's holy word by God's Holy Spirit, then we are changed, we are transformed One commentator said, Peter wants his churches to maintain a loose grip on the world around and a tight grip on the world to come. He wants us to taste and see that the Lord is good.
I was away, as you know, uh, a little while ago, and one of the things I was focusing in on was the prodigal son. And, you know, Henry Newman has written a couple of books about the parable, and one of them is about coming home. And, you know, the Rembrandt painting, I'm sure, that picture of the father holding the son who's on his knees in front of him, kind of enveloped within that loving reception. And, you know, he gets the best robe and the sandals and a feast beyond all feasts and that ring of sonship, which was so important, on his finger. And in that picture, the father just holds him. The son kneels and he puts both hands on him and he holds him close. And it's just such a beautiful picture, isn't it, of what God has done. We've been singing about coming home uh, to God. And, And this is a beautiful picture but that he wants us to remain in that stance, if you like, of being held by him, that we're his forever, that we're his child. He doesn't want us to go back to the pigsty. He doesn't want us to go back to our old ways, but he wants us to enter more and more into his ways. He wants us to discover through his word. He wants us through the work of the Spirit in us to become more like the Father, But this takes focus, it takes balance, it takes us having the right fear of God. It needs us to have our eyes fixed on that living hope that is before us. Recognizing that we're temporary residents here, here for just a little while. But he wants us to bow the knee in reverent fear, knowing that we're held in God's everlasting arms, that we're secure, they're full of joy in God. He wants us to be willing to lay down our lives because he gave his son to lay down his life, to pay the greatest ransom price ever for you, for me. So what's our response this morning to all of this? There's so so much here in a sense. But Peter is saying in this passage, you know, if you've got that first part, verses 1 to 12, if you've received God's mercy, that priceless inheritance, then the therefore is that your way of living will be different. It will be different. We will be more holy, more reverent, more obedient. Yes, we still mess up all the time. But God wants us to fall down before him because we are weak, but he is strong. And knowing within all of this that what we see in part before him now, one day we'll see fully as we reach our eternal home and we will dwell with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit forever. So may we... May we pick up that kind of skirt of our brains. May we keep our balance. May we focus on what's true and right. And may we live to please, to glorify our Father who gave his very best for us. Let's pray together. Father, we just say thank you. Thank you that the price has been paid for us, that the ransom has been paid. Thank you for the precious blood of Jesus that was poured out for us. Lord, we do want there to be a therefore in our daily lives. We do want there to be a difference in us because we're your child. Lord, we want to be reflectors of you to this world around, that they would see that we are part of your family. So Lord, would you help us this coming week, day by day, in our workplaces, in our homes, in our neighbors, with our neighbors, friends, family, whatever it might be. Would you help us to to be wise? Would you help us to be self-controlled? Do you help us to open your, your word, to be reliant upon you by your spirit? 
Lord, that we would make good decisions, that we would be your people out and about, reflectors of you. Lord, we want to take delight in you because you have done so much for us. You love us so much. You've brought us from darkness into your marvelous light. Lord, would you help us to live by your strength as your children of light in this world we ask. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand together and sing this closing uh, hymn, which is all about Be Thou My Vision.
as we come to a close, some words from the book of Hebrews, chapter 13. Now may the God of peace, who brought up from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, and ratified an eternal covenant with his blood, may he equip you with all you need for doing his will. May he produce in you, through the power of Jesus Christ, every good thing that is pleasing to him. All glory to him forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for being here uh, this morning. Great to, great to have you with us. Great to have you joining online too. And just to say, the half two at Ferry Meadows, there's a church walk today. Beautiful weather. We've got a different route that we're going to take. And you're very welcome to join us. We'll be leaving half two, so please be there ready uh, for that. About an hour's walk. And then tea and coffee at the cafe afterwards. I hope you can join us for that. So tea and coffee now in the annex. And God bless you this coming week. <laughs>